Welcome to a little bit of homeschooling, people. Today we are going to be learning all about how to switch from flat pedals to clip pedals, and I am going to be your teacher, Professor Payne. Yes, sit back and relax as we delve into the depths of both types of pedals and how you can look at switching from this kind to this kind. Flat pedals win medals, right? And you might be thinking that when you see guys like Sam Hill absolutely destroying everything in their path, adorn some flat pedals. But is it always quite that simple? Do you often find yourself thinking, crikey, it's a bit rough here, I wouldn't mind being a bit clipped in. Well, don't worry, we're gonna help with that right this second. Now let's go back to basics. Now, flat pedals are generally made of metal, but sometimes you will find plastic ones with plastic pins. Now, clipless pedals. So called that because, well, back in the day, if you didn't have toe clips, you were clipless. I know, crazy right, but that's before my time, so I can't really shed no more light on that. So the time has come and you are thinking of switching from that flat pedal to that clippy pedal. So let's strip it back and look at all the different things you need to think about before making such a crazy decision. Firstly, there's sort of two main systems out there. There are the Crank Brothers system that we have here and the Shimano system, the original, the OG of SPDs. Yep, you can't beat these things, they've been around forever. Both different systems offer their own advantages and disadvantages. If you want that lighter feeling and easier to clip in feeling, then the Crank Brothers with its slightly more float in it will be the one for you. If you want that kind of more robust, definitive click, if you like, then a Shimano is probably gonna be the one for you. It's worth noting also that a lot of other companies do license the Shimano SPD style system. So you'll see them on things like the DMR pedal and the Ritchie pedals. Now, here at the channel, we are sponsored by Crank Brothers, which is lucky because I love them and get to use them all the time. But let's look at the advantages of these for the moment. This one, like I said, is your Crank Brothers Mallet E. You can see there's a cage around the outside of it with the mechanism in the middle. The Crank Brothers is gonna offer you, like I said before, that sort of more float once you're clipped in. So when your foot is engaged into the pedal, you're gonna have a little bit more free movement on there. This, however, can be adjusted, so don't feel like you're gonna clip into these and it's just gonna be flopping around everywhere. That's not gonna happen. They also offer different cleat options, so you can get tighter and firmer cleats when clipping in and out. This is also gonna affect the amount of free play in your foot down there. Now, back to those Shimano's. Here are the Saints. These are their downhill pedals. These are pretty heavy, but pretty sturdy and tough. Again, the mechanism fixed in the middle here. It doesn't float like the Crank Brothers does. You can see that one spins around, so you can constantly almost clip in if you like. The Shimano's have uh, the system on both sides, obviously, and then the pins dotted around the edge. Like I said, these bad boys have been going since the dawn of time, and they are bulletproof and bombproof. You adjust the tightness of the cleat with an Allen key at the back here, and that basically winds up the spring and tightens it so it's harder to clip in and out. This can be great, obviously, if you want to be more attached to the bike and feel like you're more planted on it. Some people like that freedom of movement, makes it feel like they're on flat pedals still. So really, try both systems if you can, would be a great recommendation. So you've given a lot of thought as to which system of clipless you're gonna use, but for the purposes of this one, we're gonna obviously be checking out the Crank Brothers pedals and which style of pedal is gonna suit you and your riding the most. Now, there's everything on offer out there from lightweight XC pedals to a more endurance all mountain type of pedal to a full on and downhill clipless pedal. If you're an XC whippet and are just using it for maybe some lighter use or just racing, then something like this, the Crank Brothers Egg Beater. It's a minimalist design to save on weight. Uh, there's no cage around the mechanism if you like to protect it. It's a strip back pedal. Great if you want to keep the weight down. Downside to something like this is if you clip in and then you unclip, your shoe is just resting on that mechanism and nothing else. There's no extra support there. So really think about that. If you're riding sort of crazier terrain, then it might be worth sort of thinking of something a little more robust and a bit different. If you're riding a bit more enduro, all mountain and trail riding, you might want to look at something like this. Now, this is my uh, fairly well used set of Crank Brothers Mallet E pedals. You can see it's got the same mechanism as the XC pedals in it, but it's housed inside this metal cage, sort of all around the outside here. What that is, that protects the mechanism from getting clobbered by any rock should you hit it on anything, but also it gives you some stability. So once you unclip, 
if you can't get back into the pedal properly, your shoe can sit nicely on that platform. So it's kind of like riding a flat pedal, um, but not quite as good, obviously. And at the same time, it just gives you an extra bit of support whilst you try and find your cleat and clip back in. So that's system decided, pedal decided, but you gotta get attached to those pedals. Shoes, love a pair of shoes, me. And as with our pedals, there are th sort of three distinctive categories of shoes. You've got your XC lightweight shoes, your kind of all mountain shoes or trail shoes, and you've got downhill shoes as well. We're gonna take a look at pairs of shoes I've got, compare the differences. Now these XC shoes, a BOA system on them, which is the cable ratchet to tighten them up with the Velcro at the bottom. You can see they are very minimalist. There's not a lot to them. There's no padding, they're very fitted, and the soles are very stiff. So if you're gonna be walking around lots, these are probably not the ones for you. And power transfer is great from an XC point of view uh, and a sort of enduro point of view if you're a, a racer at heart. But like I say, if you're just switching over or just getting used to getting into clippy pedals, then I'd probably recommend a more traily or mountain shoe. Now, these are a traily or mountain style SPD shoe. They're a lace up, they're a little bit more flexible, a lot more padding around the heel and the toes, like a much sturdier toe if you were to like stub it on a rock. The soles are generally a lot grippier as well. There's a, they're a softer rubber. With that cage on the pedal, you're gonna be able to grip it and ride it kind of like a sketchy flat pedals. The only version of a downhill shoe over this is it might be slightly more protection to it, slightly stiffer on the soles because they are a bit more racy sometimes, um, or a softer rubber as well to grip on that pedal when you do become unclipped. So we've dialed in our shoe and pedal combo. We know what we want. We've got the right pedals. We've matched the shoes. We've looked at the system. We have ticked all the boxes, but hang on, wait. How do you actually clip in? Well, I think it's time we went to the garden and took a look at how to do it. Let's take a look at then the basic technique of clipping in. Now for this, you're gonna wanna find somewhere fairly safe because toppling over is gonna be a risk. I've uh, found a good spot next to my garage here I can lean up to. Um, a nice grassy spot or in a field, something like that, somewhere you can lean against or if you do topple over, it's not gonna hurt too much. A little bit of patience is gonna be required here because it does take time to find sort of the cleat into the pedal and get clipped in. So have a bit of patience, bear with it and you will get it, I promise. Just practice clipping in and out, in and out, over and over again. That's gonna really help you remember where the cleat is on the bottom of your shoe and getting used to finding it, clipping straight into the pedal. Once you've mastered clipping in and out and are feeling comfortable with it, it's time to take it to the trail. Start off with a fairly simple bit of track that you're used to, preferably something with a few turns in and just practice coming into and out of the turn, clipping out and then back in. This will help you get the feel of finding where the cleat is on the bottom of the shoe and getting used to locating it on the pedal. When the going gets rougher is when you're really going to see clippy shoes and pedals come into their own, as there'll be no more of that feet shaking off the pedals malarkey. You'll be able to hit rock gardens with these, safe in the knowledge your feet aren't going anywhere. However, I'd only recommend this once you've really got used to being clipped in. You're still going to want to use a similar technique to riding flats, so keep those heels down and depending on preference, the pedal under the ball of your feet. But like I said, this is personal preference and can depend on what you like. That is it for our homeschooling how to. I hope I've been able to help with your uh, conundrum of whether to switch from flats to clips or if you were thinking of it, how to do it and how best to go about it. I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments section below and see how you're getting on with switching from flats to clips. Let us know what you prefer. As always, if you wanna watch more GMBN, don't forget to hit subscribe give us a thumbs up and look forward to hearing from you guys. Cheers.